Welcome to the presentation of our paper, Minimum Feedback for Collision-Free Random Access. This is a joint work by myself, Justin Kang, and my supervisor, Professor Wei Yu at the University of Toronto. One of the main contributions of this work is the formulation of a massive access problem is finding the most efficient feedback scheme for user scheduling. We have achievability and converse results for the minimum feedback rate required to ensure users do not collide. We also show that the problem is intimately related with a problem in perfect hashing theory. We hope you enjoy. We will examine a massive random access network, which is a crucial requirement for the Internet of Things. The distinguishing features of these networks include massive numbers of devices in the order of 100,000 to 1 million devices per base station and sporadic traffic making both the identification of active devices and the subsequent scheduling of their data transmission challenging tasks. We consider a massive random access model with n users in a cell, of which a small random set of k users seek to send a payload to the base station. We propose the following three-phase random access scheme. In the first phase, K active users transmit pre-assigned uniquely identifying pilot sequences over the multiple access channel synchronously to indicate their activities. In phase two, the base station receives these pilot sequences and identifies the set of active users without error. It then transmits a common feedback message over the broadcast channel. This feedback message contains sufficient information to schedule the transmission of each of the K active users. In the third and final phase, each of the K active users use the common feedback message to determine which slot they should use for transmission. They then transmit their payloads, each in a separate slot, thus avoiding collision. The question we wish to answer in this paper is, what is the minimum common feedback from the base station to the users so that the users can be scheduled collision free? Let's refer to the scheme we just discussed as the scheduled approach to random access. This scheduled approach can be compared to other random access schemes, for example, slaughtered aloha, which involves contention and collision resolution. Users transmit in slots randomly and retransmit if there's a collision. We can also compare these schemes to unsourced multiple access, where identification is not done as part of the scheme and identification information is instead embedded as part of the payload. In both the unsourced and contention-based schemes, the overhead cost of transmission is proportional to the log of the number of users. This can be up to 20 bits when there are 1 million potential users, a considerable cost, particularly if the payload is small. Despite the fact that both of these schemes have this log n scaling overhead, we can show that it is not intrinsic to massive access because there exists a feedback scheme which has a much smaller log log n scaling overhead. Let's examine a naive scheme for feedback. First, let's assign a unique index to each of the n potential users. Each of these users then send their pilot message and the base station determines which K users are active. As feedback, the base station then lists the indices of the K active users in the order in which they should transmit. Finally, each user transmits in the order it was listed. Since each index requires a total of log n bits, listing all K users leads to a feedback cost of K times log n bits. We ask ourselves, can we do better than this? The answer turns out to be yes. Let's try to understand why this naive scheme is not optimal. The key observation is that it specifies a precise order in which K users should transmit, but there are K factorial collision-free schedules over the K users. It's possible to use the flexibility of only having to specify one of the K factorial schedules to significantly reduce the feedback rate. Further, the naive scheme reveals the identities of all of the active users and their schedule slots to everyone. This is clearly extraneous information. 
as each user only needs to know which slot it should transmit and does not care about the schedule of the other active users. In particular, we can address the second issue by using the identification technique first presented in Identification via Channels by Elsweed and Duick. Suppose we can use an identification code to identify one out of n users in order log log n bits. If we do this for each of the k active users, this results in a feedback rate of order k times log log n. In spite of this improvement, even this scheme is not optimal. As we will show, it is possible to have an even lower feedback rate while still maintaining zero collision. As a simple example, let's consider the case where there are two active users. Let's index the n users using log n bits. If we choose two active users, we can be certain that the binary representation of their indices must differ in at least one place. Thus, a viable feedback strategy is for the base station to transmit the location where the two indices differ. Then, the user with the zero at that location can transmit first, and the user with the one can go second. The total cost of feedback for this strategy is order log log n. In fact, we will later show that this is the optimal scheme for the case of two active users. Now that we've considered the case of two active users, let's expand to an arbitrary number of users. First, let's discuss a few preliminaries. We will represent the index of each user as an element of an index set 1 through n. Activity patterns of k active users are represented as k element subsets of this index set. The base station determines the activity pattern and then encodes it into a feedback message. This common feedback message is then received by each user. The user then decodes their message to determine which slot they should use for transmission. For this analysis, we will only consider the case where there are k slots, but in general, it is possible to have more, and this can decrease the feedback rate. With this notation, no collision means that for any activity pattern, there exists a feedback message such that the active users decode their feedback messages into a different slot. Let's define a k partition of the index set to be a tuple of disjoint subsets, the union of which is the index set. Let's define this function c as the set of activity patterns which have exactly one user in each subset of the partition. Let's go over a simple example with four active users. This is a partition of the numbers 1 through 4. And there are four different activity patterns which have exactly one user in each subset. For example, one is in the first subset and three is in the second. These four patterns make up the set C of X. If an activity pattern is in C of X, we say that the partition covers that activity pattern. We are going to devise an encoding and decoding scheme which makes use of these partitions. Let's construct capital T partitions such that the union of C of X for each of these T partitions is the set of all possible activity patterns. Then, for an activity pattern A, we design an encoder which outputs T if the teeth partition covers that activity pattern. Since all the activity patterns are covered by at least one partition, this can be done. Then, each user has a unique decoder, which decodes the symbol T to the index of the subset in the teeth partition, which contains the index of that particular user. 
As an example of how this works, let's take a look at a partitioning scheme based on the Tetra code with nine total users and three active users. In total, there are four partitions. Each one splits the users into three groups. In the figure, we've represented the grouping using colors. For any choice of activity pattern, there will be at least one partition where each of the three users have a different color. For example, let's consider the case where users 1, 5, and 6 are active. In this case, the first partition doesn't work because users 5 and 6 are the same color. And in the second partition, users 1 and 6 are in the same color. In the third partition, however, they're all different colors. So sending three as a feedback message will result in no collision. In fact, we could have chosen any three active users and we would have found at least one partition, which results in no collision. Thus, in total, we need only two bits of feedback to ensure zero collision when there are three active users and nine total users. It turns out that this cannot be done with a fewer number of partitions. Now that we've become acquainted with this set partitioning framework, it's important to note that it is not restrictive. By this, we mean that any set of deterministic collision-free decoders, which map from a set of T symbols to a slot, can be written in the set partition framework with T partitions. The relationship between those partitions and the decoders are given here. But the key point here is that the framework is really just a way for us to view the problem differently. And it gives us a single quantity, the number of partitions, T, which is the quantity to be minimized in order to minimize the feedback rate for zero collision feedback. First, let's consider what feedback rates are achievable. To do this, we will consider a random partitioning argument. This random partitioning argument will show that there exists a feedback scheme which scales as log log n and has a linear scaling in k. Let's take t random equipartitions, where each subset is the same size. Each partition will cover some potentially overlapping subset of activity patterns, which are depicted by circles in the figure. The probability that a given activity pattern is not covered by these partitions is given by this expression. We then define D to be the expected number of activity patterns which are not covered by the T partitions. Using the above expression, we can evaluate this expectation in terms of N, K, and T. Since D, which represents the expected number of activity patterns which are not covered, is a non-negative integer, if it falls below one, then there must be at least one choice of T partitions for which the number of activity patterns which are not covered is zero. In particular, if the expectation falls below one, we have for any T greater than this expression that there exists a set of T partitions which cover all activity patterns. If we define the rate to be the log of the number of partitions, this means that there's an achievable rate which is linear in K and has an order log log N term. Since the optimal rate must be less than or equal to this achievable rate, the optimal rate must have a scaling of at most order log log N and at most a linear dependence on k. Now that we've established achievability bounds on the optimal feedback rate, we can also establish some converse results. For example, we can consider a simple volume bound. Since each partition can only cover a small fraction of activity patterns, if we take the total number of activity patterns and divide this by the maximum number of activity patterns which can be covered by a single partition, we can get a lower bound on the number of partitions required to cover all activity patterns.
If it were possible to have all partitions of maximum size, which cover disjoint sets of activity patterns, this bound would be achievable, but generally it is not. If we take the log of this expression, we get a lower bound on the optimal rate. Since this term goes to zero for n much greater than k, this tells us that the minimum average rate must be at least linear in k. The volume bound showed us the dependence on k, the number of active users. However, the minimum rate also depends on the total number of potential users, n. This is what we're going to try to determine now. The trick will be keeping track of a subset of indices which has none of its k element subsets covered. Let's generate a partition. This will cover some of the activity patterns, but not all of them. For example, since the covered activity patterns all contain one element from each subset, if we consider activity patterns which are drawn from the elements of S1, which has one of the subsets subtracted, none of them will be covered. Next, we note that the number of elements in the first set, S1, is lower bounded by this function of n and k. We can repeat this argument for each successive partition and say that in the teeth partition, there is a set which is at least of cardinality n times 1 minus 1 over k to the t, of which none of its k element subsets have been covered. At some point, this lower bound could drop below k minus 1. In that case, there are no longer any activity patterns which we can say for certain are not covered. This places a bound on the optimal feedback rate and says that the optimal feedback rate must be at least order log log n for fixed k. To recap, we've presented three bounds. The random partitioning achievability bound says that the minimum feedback rate is at most linear in k and has a log log n scaling term. The volume bound says that the minimum feedback rate is at least linear in k for large n, and the exclusion bound says that the feedback rate is at least a log log n scaling for fixed k. We can conclude that the minimum feedback rate scales linearly in k and s theta log log n in our regime of interest. These bounds, while new in this context, are well known in other problems. For example, the volume and random construction bounds can be found in the work of Fredman and Komolosh on perfect hashing, and the exclusion bound can be found in an early work by Sneer on a hypergraph covering problem. In fact, these three problems are all equivalent. Let's review the perfect hashing family problem. An NBK family of perfect hash functions is a family of functions which maps from the set of N keys to a set of B hashes. The family is constructed such that for any K keys, there's at least one function in the family which maps the keys injectively onto the set of hashes. We can view our decoding functions as an NKK family of perfect hash functions if we swap the argument and the subscript. A significant amount of study has gone into developing bounds on the minimum number of hash functions required for an NBK perfect hash family. Fredman and Komlosh and Corner and Martin have devised the following bounds. These bounds are also applicable to our problem. Interestingly, they also provide some insights into how the minimum feedback rate varies as the number of available slots increases. To conclude, let's review what we've presented. We sought to answer a simple question. What's the minimum amount of feedback required for scheduling K out of N users without collision for massive random access? We found that the optimal collision-free feedback rate scales as theta log log N plus a linear term in K. We also showed that this problem is intimately related to the perfect hashing problem. This concludes our presentation.
Thank you for listening.